Mabel Johnson. Well, we lived across the street from Mabel Johnson. And my mother and Mabel Johnson were friends. And it was Mabel Johnson that taught my mother how to braid rugs. And my mother knew how to hook rugs. So my mother showed Mabel Johnson how to hook. Now, Mabel Johnson was an old lady when I was a little kid. And she apparently had this uh, knack of predicting what one would do in their later lives from observing you working in her flower beds. She would pay the kids in the neighborhood 10 cents to weed her flower bed. That was big money for us. So my mother, as I said, was friendly with Mabel. Mabel would hire you to your, she'd never hire you, she'd talk to your mother and say, I could use some work over here in my flower beds. And there's still a few flower beds left, but there's not much, but they, she had a whole bunch of flower beds. And that thing that's a house, that was, a, was her barn, by the way. So she hired my brother Jimmy, uh, long before I came along. And then she made arrangements with my mother to have me come over and do some weeding, although I was just a little kid. So I went over there on several occasions, and I didn't particularly care about weeding uh, flowers. It just didn't strike me as being very exciting. So I happened upon an idea, and I couldn't have been five or six years old, I guess. If you pull the flowers out, she'll never ask you to come back. Uh, so this one particular day, she sent me out to weed one flower bed. I pulled the weeds out of the flower bed, and she had me do another one. And I pulled out the flowers instead of the weeds and said, I thought they were weeds. And I never got asked back to weed flower beds. And I accomplished my goal. But she used to have kids in the neighborhood do that. She would sit on her front porch and she would sit there and watch you weed the flowers and she'd braid rugs at the same time. And she'd have these huge braided rugs. What was Mabel Johnson's prediction for you? Oh, Mabel Johnson told my mother that she predicted that my brother, Jim, would be a white collar worker and could even end up as a preacher. Uh, for me, blue collar material and needs a lot of coaching and it's possible he might make something out of himself. It was her prediction. Now, my mother repeated that to me many, many times. And in fact, when I became a justice of the peace, the very first wedding was Alan Whiting. And Mabel Johnson came, and she sat there, and she had a good time. But uh, she told me afterwards, well, I never thought you would ever be a preacher. Now, she just considered that being a preacher, see. But... I just don't know how you did it. I think she kind of liked the fact that I had made a little bit out of myself. But that was Mabel's prediction. And somehow she judged all this from how you weeded her garden. How did you get interested in becoming a justice of the peace? Oh, I can tell you a story about that. Sometimes around 1978, Alan Whiting was a customer in the store and I would see him every day. And he was um, taken with a young woman by the name of Lynn Erickson. And I told Alan one day at the store that you're gonna marry her. It's like Mabel Johnson, see? And Alan said, no way. And I said, you're gonna marry him. So this went on for a little bit. So this one day, Alan said, after I had told him he was going to marry her, and he told me he wasn't going to marry her, he took a dollar bill, and he ripped it in half, and gave me one half of it. He said, if I marry her, I'll send you the other half. If not, I want that piece back. So said, okay, I put it in an envelope, put it in a little drawer underneath the counter, and Life went on, and sometime late 
in the summer of 78, I got a letter addressed to me from Salt Lake City, Utah. I said, who the hell do I know in Salt Lake City, Utah? So I opened it up. It was half of a dollar bill. So I went to the, to the drawer under the counter, opened up the envelope, and matched it right away. But it had no names. It was an envelope. I matched the two pieces, and they fit perfectly. And so I knew it was from Alan, and I knew what was going to happen.